Awesome. Welcome everyone to Cisco Virtual Kitchen or SVK. Or call it whatever you like. Uh, we got a great show, which we are quoting and calling it Saddle Dome a la carte podcast. So I'm super excited today. We have, first of all, a legend. And yeah, Shep Randy, I'm calling you a legend. Um, on the show today from the Saddle Dome. And we also have our sous chef today. And I'm going to get her to introduce Chef Grant, and uh, we'll get to know these, these amazing people and uh, the insights of what happens in. And I'm going to bring you guys up on the screen here, if I can hit the right button. And uh, <laughs> just give me a second. There it is. <laughs> There's the right button. All right. So first of all, thank you both for being on your show on our network. There we go, Brandy. Thanks. Nice to be here again. So soon. Nice to be here. <laughs> you learned so much last time about uh, what you do at the Saddle Dome, and I'm still kind of ah in it because I I don't think you guys I think you guys order it somewhere and you bring it in and you just reat it. <laughs> nope. You guys do too it's much over there. <laughs> That'd be a nice thing though. No, I, it's incredible what you guys do. And first of all, it's just an honor to both of you to be on our show today. And for everyone that's watching us on TikTok, you can also uh, watch us on YouTube Live right now. And we're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, a whole bunch of other places too. Uh, that you can just watch our show today or watch it on demand on all those channels later on too when you get a chance. So Chef Brandy, who's this guy beside you? Who's this guy? So this guy <laughs> is... Um... This is Chef Grant McIsaac. Um, he's worked with us for oh, oh, seven years, eight years eight now. now. Um, so Grant runs the concessions, uh, everything that you see on the concourse, um, plus a couple of other places around the building. So um, I'll let him speak a little bit more about it. But um, just wanted to take this opportunity to kind of sh sh shed some light into some other areas of the building and what we do at the Saddle Dome. That's really cool. That is really cool. So, so you you create all the like the like the food that we love, Chef Grat. Like, not saying the other food we don't love, but the stuff that we go there and we go, oh man, and we just go crazy on it. Can you yeah. tell us? Like, first of all, thank you, because uh, <laughs> I love all the food you guys make there. Um, I do want to talk about a little about your industry because uh, Chef Brandy was talking about her past and her relationship to the industry and. You know, I probably inspired a few others uh, that may want to jump into the industry as well. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, Chef Grant? Uh, yeah, I started a little bit younger for sure. Uh, actually, when I was in high school, I ended up on a work experience program at the Hyatt Hotel. And nice. uh, things worked out really well there. I actually ended up staying at Hyatt Hotel for nine years. And then uh, after that, it was another hotel. I did Delta for a little while. Went kind of to the private sector for a few years, and then uh, they actually ended up ended up being here. A really? little bit not different from hotel. Did you ever think you'd be a chef, sous chef at the Saddle though? Never Pretty once. Cool. Honestly, I was I didn't know much about the Saddle Dome. Like I knew all the basic stuff, but I didn't realize how much stuff is actually here. <laughs> until even I started working here. So I think that's one of the biggest things. People don't know what we have, like all the different options and what we're actually serving. Even if you're on the concourse, you know, you know, everyone knows our hot dogs, burgers, whatnot, but the specialty stands that we have all the way around that during an intermission, it's crowded up here. I get it. People aren't always traveling around the concourse. So seeing what's actually up here and the options we have. Yeah. I never pictured how much stuff actually goes on here. So what's the craziest item that you that you guys serve up there? What's right the crazy? now, like, from your perspective, I say crazy. I think it's all crazy because it's so good. So uh, a little crazy, little fun. Right now, we're actually serving a pork lollipop. It's okay, a wait, pork belly. wait a minute. Yeah, a what? <laughs> pork belly <laughs> lollipop. We actually like break it down. We sous vide it for twenty four hours. Then we uh, cook it off again with a uh, cherry cola barbecue sauce, uh, right off a stick. That's probably one of the craziest items on the concourse today. No way. <laughs> and it's amazing. We talked about innovation, Brandy, last time. And I think that's where those ideas come from. Uh, that's wicked. That is so wicked. Yeah. So as a sous chef, um, share with some of those biggest accomplishments that you've had in the past, let's say. Uh, we're talking about here? 
Yeah. Uh, probably transformation of the concourse. Now, what I mean by that is, so when I first started up in quick service, we, uh, we weren't as heavily involved then. We didn't have a lot of specialty areas, right? Exactly. We always have our basics. You'll have your hot dogs, burgers, your pizza, whatnot. But in the last five years, we've created a lot more destination spots on the concourse. Right. So we've opened up stuff like we've started an entirely vegan stand, which was an undertaking on its own. Hey, uh, we hold it. so we're going to talk about let me let me where's my pen. We got to talk about that because that is <laughs> easy. Cool. OK, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, um, we're doing that Coca-Cola test kitchen now for that. We change that menu every single month and that's kind of our main playground. But we have a taco and tequila stand that we're serving fresh tacos out of. They're fantastic. We have at Bandit Peak, we're doing craft nachos where we have like mole pork nachos. We have a chili de arbol nachos, all baked to order, not just your regular dipping cheese stuff. We have a rotisserie where we do fresh chicken every single game, sauteed vegetables, roasted potatoes. Like we actually have tons of options. Yeah. Not everyone knows about. Did you know about all those? <laughs> I, I didn't. I honestly didn't know. Case, right. It's hard to get people educated on that, moving around the concourse and seeing these options. You know, we're starting to move into like that social media area where we're trying to show off these areas and where they're at just to kind of invite people to come here and go, I'm going to try that. I saw it. That is why Chef Randy has her own podcast. (laughs) (laughs) To showcase all of these things. Exactly. And we change you know, a bunch of the items every year as well. And even throughout the year, you know, we, we have the opportunity to be able to change some of the items throughout the year with our digital menus and things like that as well. So um, it's quite a, a nice opportunity to showcase different things and try out different things and see what people want. I'm blown away. So do you, now I'm not going to point fingers because I'm a Calgary boy too. You guys probably have the best menus in all the arenas, right? North Here. America. I like, I like to think so anyway. <laughs> I think, thank you. Well, there's two things I think comes from that. It's great leadership. Um, so you have to have someone, I think, in the spirit of Chef Brandy and what you bring to 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 bring that level of uh, different ideas and different things. So, so I think it's a big part of everyone. You must have an amazing team. And your leadership, Brandy, allowing you guys to do those things. That's crazy cool. Okay. So, so cool. So let's so walk us through a typical day there, sous chef Grant. Uh, so we get up at seven a.m. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, for my, personally, it's more more of an afternoon thing. Go to bed on those days, man. Later. later. Let's go back to that. Like, what time's bedtime though? What's the hat? What's time's bedtime on those days? You get up at seven in the morning. <laughs> well, we don't get up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so afternoon start. Usually, first thing you come in, uh, I have a team that's here, or that are here actually at eight in the morning that kind of start the day going. That's anywhere from starting to make the pizza dough to producing, getting all the items ready for that evening. So, first things first is going around, just making sure everyone's on point there, that we have everything moving along, that on our timeline is right, so that we're ready to open for door open. Uh, from there, it's just going over our inventory, checking orders, making sure I have enough everything for the next game. Small things like from your pretzels and churros, right, to your um, pork butts and stuff so we can make the mole pork for the next day. Uh, making our par stocks. Like, we have to do a lot of math up here just to plan for the thousands of every item that we sell. So it's kind of going over all those par items, making sure everything's ready and we're set up for door open because... Well, that's most important thing. Ready for door when the guests arrive. From there, it's uh, we start checking in our cooks. Like on average, Flames game, we're running yeah. sixty-five to seventy cooks alone on the concourse. Hey, re- repeat that. that. Repeat that. Sixty to, 70. to seventy on a game yeah. night. Yeah. Randy, that doesn't include game. the brigade downstairs. Nope, nothing downstairs. That's just concourse. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, it's. With all the different stands we have, it it takes a lot of hands to help put that stuff out. I mean, even something as simple as uh, our burger and brew stand. It's a burger, yes. But when you're producing 1,200 in service, which is less than three hours. And they're all made fresh and as close to order as possible and everything else. So 
it's, it's, it's a lot of hands. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. You guys are crazy. That's all I'm saying. You guys are crazy. That is right? amazing. It but is. That's going around, you have to check. You know, you're trying to keep an eye also on, what, 21 smaller kitchens here, right? So, so how do you do that, Jeff? At the same Jeff, time. You know, Jeff, just how do you do right that? Over here, do you do protein isn't perfect over here. It's just a <laughs> lot of moving parts, a lot of moving around to try and make sure the guest is getting everything that we want them to have, what we want to showcase to them. So, so that must come from experience, right? Like you didn't just do that. Yeah. That must come from the experience you have, right? Not, not something you jump into. But I you, it would be very, very difficult to but just at the same time, jump you, in. you don't really see exactly something like this anywhere else. So it's a lot of oh. using other experiences from other places and running, you know, the hotels. I know Grant ran a bunch of large functions and things where there's things everywhere. So that experience definitely puts into it, but. We always say yeah. you don't actually know this business here until you're actually in it. It's very difficult to describe sometimes. Uh, I said it myself. I'm like, oh, yeah, we used to do functions for 5,000 people, like really crazy ones. No problem. This should be a walk in the park. No, it's completely different. And it also jumps up to 18,000. So <laughs> night and day. Wow. Definitely you get the basics of, you know, or leading your group and planning, organizing, doing those numbers. But jumping in and actually doing it whole new beast yeah i can only imagine um so how do you so other chefs that are out there i always i always love having chefs like yourself, both of yourselves on the show to share the inspiration of getting others what is some advice if people are looking at you know maybe coming working at the saddle dome and, and working with you guys what what are you looking for in people what do you look for in in people to say you know what you're going to be awesome on here and be a part of our team uh the ability probably to multitask and move like to keep yourself organized so with the amount of people that we have if they aren't keeping themselves organized there's no way we'll keep a stand organized a restaurant organized or the whole stadium we really look for that those people that can handle the situation the pressure and stay calm and keep moving forward That's so one of the bigger things that when we're interviewing that i kind of yeah. I kind of look for. Yeah, now, what about experience it. cooking? Is that a more important or is all these other traits more important than maybe the experience of cooking? It depends where you're applying. For me personally, so if I'm looking for a stand cook, um, I will bring in a lot of people that don't have experience yet. Um, I have a lot of people that are in high school still uh, coming here for their first job. It's a perfect part-time job for them, right? It's just that after school lull. And, uh, Here's a chance where they will get to see something super fast paced, right? They'll get to learn in a burger and brew. And it's and we kind of compartmentalize it to get them started. Like we have one person that might just butter burger buns for two hours as fast as they possibly can, right? So they're kind of building up, getting that kind of experience, and then they'll move to the burgers and whatnot, assembling. Um, so experience for me on my end isn't number one for sure. It's attitude in the people. Same with you, Brandy? Uh, depending on, again, which kitchen that you're working in, we love to bring in new people that don't have a lot of experience. Um, but, you know, we do have to definitely hire people with the experience as well to help support those new people even. Um, you know, you don't, having a whole kitchen full of people that haven't really cooked before is, um, it's quite um, difficult, I guess I could say. Um, but... That being said, like we we do love to be able to be you know one of the first places that someone does have a job in the kitchen um even whether you stay in the kitchen or not it's a great um opportunity to get your foot in the door in the saddle dome in any way or even just in the industry or you know to be able to say that you worked in these environments in any job is is a good skill set for in my opinion anyway so to be able to deal with pressure and and fast pace and environments and you know working with a very diverse group of people um in different areas well i think just wearing that badge you guys get to wear uh is pretty pretty cool like that's a that, like i always talk i said about this last time uh with chef brandy is that the, that to have the that brand on your chef jacket has got to be pretty good when you put it on every day for sure it's yeah pretty, <laughs> exactly. pretty cool it's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> not too many chefs that have that on their jackets, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to ask you, maybe I'll throw this both to you, 
back both to you, uh, either or can answer this question first. Um, how do you guys handle some feedback from customers or people that are enjoying your food? Do you ever get feedback on what they think about your food? And how do you handle that? Uh, definitely. I mean, it, to me, it's, it's very important to get feedback from the customers because really that's why we're here. Um, it's to make the guests happy and to, you know, put out what they, what they're looking for. Um, so, so I would just say the best thing is to get constructive feedback. You know, if you don't like something, please let us know why. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a part of what we do is taking what people are wanting or, or even their feedback of, Hey, I had this situation happen to me. Um, we love the idea of being able to, to make that better. You know, we're always striving to be the best that we can. Um, so having that, that type of feedback can really push us to, and, and notice things that maybe we missed. Um, cause like I said, it is a very large building and we can't be everywhere at once. So it's great, you know, to be able to have that feedback as well from, because of that. Yeah. Chef Grant, what do you, how, you must get feedback. People going up, eh, we need more butter on the popcorn. Or uh, this we get a lot of feedback right, from like, our guests. Feed- we get a lot of feedback from our internal guests. You know, all the other managers will come and try our new menu items and they'll always let me know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do get from external. I love it when we get the compliments or they actually even recognize, they even say and said, like, I saw these guys hustling and great burger that I had or this taco was amazing. But the negative is important too. I mean, yeah. we can't fix it if we don't know. If we miss some or I see a trend, something happened here, it allows us to kind of zero in at least and make sure I don't get those comments anymore, right? That's the that's the goal. Well, you know, I, I wanted to talk about it because I think when chefs get into the industry or people coming into the industry, and I've met a lot of chefs that cannot take feedback very well, right? And I'm sure you all know who exactly, you've all experienced that as well. Is well, that, sometimes it's not easy, but, it's, uh, not but easy. it's still important, so... It's important. You're right. It's not easy either. And and to have chefs that are able to take it and go, you know what, let's do something with it or, you know, not the, you need, they don't know what they're talking about as a, you know, as a customer kind of attitude, uh, which I've heard too. I've probably done it myself. Um, <laughs> to no, it. Super important. If we don't fix it, if we don't move forward, well, we're just going to be stuck. We'll, we'll be that dingy old place, right? So yeah, don't exactly. definitely take it, use it. We use it as a tool. It, it's a tool for us, basically. So I want to go back here because one of the other questions I had here on my list is what did, where do you guys get your inspiration from? I'm not sure if I asked Chef Brandy this last time. Where do you get your inspiration from? Because something, something had a trigger to put a vegan stand in Cowtown. <laughs> That was, the, that, was, yeah, that, that was part of the feedback situation. Um, it, was, it was it was that one just because we're on that one in particular, because I remember when that one came up and we we had a lot of different conversations about it because we didn't know how popular it would be. You yeah. know, is it just for a select group of people? Do we want to commit a whole stand to it? Um but for that, because we did hear that we needed more healthier options um, and vegan options or even vegetarian options on the concourse. So, um, and it was a much bigger success than any of us imagined it would be yeah. actually. So it's it actually like was fairly better. steady. Yeah. Yeah. Like feedback. Cause, cause you've, I've never seen that before. I've never heard of that before for an arena, let alone getting veggie are. with it on the concourse. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. What are you, what do you serve there? What, what's some of the items that you serve? Uh, on the menu. Currently, we have uh, nachos and cheese, but we make a vegan cheese sauce that looks just like the other one. It tastes, it similar. tastes similar, but yeah, different. Cool. definitely different. Um, uh, we're also doing a crispy potato with like a pico de gallo and a uh, vegan cream sauce on it. We have a power bowl right now. So it has rice, pickled ginger, pickled cucumber. We do a uh, jackfruit that we actually sous vide with uh, Thai peanut sauce. So it has okay. that that texture of a protein. So it has that kind of that bite to it. Um, and then we garnish that with green onions and different garnishes. We are doing uh, vegan hot dogs, of course, with a vegan chili dog as well. And we got a vegan burger that has like a balsamic glazed tomato on it. And just a bunch of different items like that that we're playing around with. That does not sound like your typical menu. <laughs> that sounds crazy good. 
<laughs> it sounds crazy. And we actually have people that come and try, like our, we used to have a bim bop on the menu and uh, the Power Bowl that we're doing that eat it. They know it's vegan, but they enjoy it that much. So that's a good sign for us. So where, where, where do you get inspiration for different dishes like that, Chef? Where, where do you get inspired? Play, where is man. Do you watch TV? Do you watch the network? Yeah, you know. Or do you in social? Yeah. Sorry? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Literally from anywhere and everywhere. For me, for I mean, especially for some of the stuff that we're playing around with up here. Yeah. Um, actually, we're serving a, a sausage roll right now in one of our test kitchen stands. And it comes with a Dijon spice ketchup. And the only reason why I even thought of doing that sauce is literally listening to the radio and it was that uh if i had a million dollars they talk about eating craft dinner and oh. fancy ah! dijon ketchup i'm like are you kidding me let's do it we, we, so we threw it on the menu so you can go I, uh, from the most crazy places just you know, what's funny, you know what's funny by that is i had a show the other day and someone else said that they were inspired by that song on another dish <laughs> really hilarious. i'm not kidding you i no. can't figure out who that was <laughs> that's really no, cool be, sometimes you wake up and just, i don't know you dreamt about something weird and if you remember to write it down yeah because you forget later and stuff like i don't know uh, i mean obviously you see we always we're always trying to check out other restaurants what are they yeah. doing or what's trending you know we're not copying anything but seeing where something's kind of floating what area and try and do something a little different of our own or you know, keeping your hand on the pulse. You know, we like to go out for dinners every so often That's cool. just to keep in touch with what's going on. Now, I want to throw this to Brandy because, Chef, you mentioned trends. I want to ask this from Brandy because I get, like, this is trend season right now. Because this is the season that every magazine and every person out there puts out a trends report and says, this is the trends for 2023. Brandy, do you list, Do you read those? Do you look at those? Do you take something from it, or is it just like it's good? It's not, I'm doing what I do by more you know grassroots way of finding the trends. Do you do that? Are those useful? They they are. They really are. Um, some you take you take everything with a grain of salt, and and then sure. also how you can work it into what you're doing. Um, some don't necessarily translate to or at least everywhere in this in this venue. Um, but uh, like I know, for example, um, at one time we were getting these um, magazines from Australia because they're season, they're you know seasons ahead of us. So we were seeing what was in their fall season to our fall season um, and things like that. That was kind of interesting to see how even things in different world <laughs> in, in a different part of the world is trending ahead of you um, before it even gets to Canada um, and things like that. But uh, it's it's definitely important to look at. But it's also, uh, I like to turn it on its head and say, well, what trend can we maybe start? Or can we take that trend and make it our own? Because, wow. um, yeah, I mean, you you want to be part of the times, but you also want to be innovative and mm -hmm. try something totally different. Yeah. Yeah, I think, kind of, I mean, where everyone else is. I mean, even on the concourse, supposed to like, you know, we we're using Chia or whatever for a couple sandwiches. And then every restaurant, even McDonald's, had chia bought all of a sudden. It's like, no, we're taking this off. Now we're just we're trying to be a little different. And yeah. when everything else starts to catch on, too, we're like, no, time to change it up, right? Well, even a couple of years ago where um, – this is quite a few years ago, I guess now, where pulled pork came back on the scene. It was everywhere. And, you know, we were like, oh, we're going to be great, or we're going to smoke our own pork. And, and we had it in all of these areas because you get really excited about it. But by the end of the season, you're kind of over it. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, let's do something different now. Um, because it just gets oversaturated too. When yeah. it is a trend, it gets so oversaturated that everybody has it. So. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember those pulled pork years. <laughs> right? right? I remember those. I remember those. You're right. It was on everything, right? And yeah. then they were putting it on pizza. They were putting it on nachos. They were putting it. It was pulled pork nachos, pork pulled pork poutine it was everywhere there's that stuff on there right so i totally agree um so i want to just kind of as we wrap up here and first of all i just want to thank you again for being on the show today and sharing all this great stuff that we don't know about what happens at the saddle dome and and uh, i'm blown away that you guys offer like you have a vegan sandwich it's got to be a first 
for arenas out there. Um, what happens when you go to other arenas? I'm sure you guys have been to other arenas and you see food there. What, what do you think when you see stuff that yeah. uh, is out there? <laughs> yeah, the, the, no, it's actually awesome because yeah? they have usually, okay, I haven't gone to a lot, but we just, recently I went to the Edmonton one and it's good to see what they're doing just to, because they're, they have a completely different idea of how maybe things should be run, mm-hmm. how That's they cool. want to present their food and some of the items that they do and you kind of step back and you kind of watch and say oh okay i didn't think about doing it that way and that might be all right or you can look at something like that's really unsuccessful don't do that right it's it actually helps to go around and see their train of thought like it, it helps you learn helps us for sure i i i think that's so important and i think that's so cool that you can get that different experience and different products at different arenas but I think the cool thing also is that I really think you guys are changing the food at arenas for good. Like, I, I don't think you can go back. Like, I don't think I don't think other places are going to look at this. You guys are really revolutioning. That's not a word. I don't know if that's even a word, but um, is uh, I also make words up, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, you guys are really changing it. So so that's incredible. It must feel pretty good knowing that you guys are changing it's difficult too, I would assume as well, because you're paving a road at the same time as changing it, right? It can be risky because you don't figuring out exactly what the guest wants and mm-hmm. what will sell is not always easy. That's why we have our Coca Cola test kitchen mm-hmm. as a, about our playground, the one that we change once a month. That's where we do test out different items to see what the public wants to buy, what will sell, and what maybe I'll will put into another stand somewhere else mm-hmm. along the way. And I mean, we played with, we did tenderloin sliders out there just to see if we could sell actual grilled tenderloin on the concourse. Uh, it sold great. Mm-hmm. We sold a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, I love it. You know what? Not a huge seller on the concourse. Not a lot no. of people are grabbing their beers and uh, a tray of sushi. No, but the, yeah, yeah, great. You had to try it, right? You had to try yeah. it. So I have to ask you on this. So, so, you, is there another one that maybe didn't work that you were like, man, I swear I was going to make it, but it didn't? You can share? What was one? Well, and again, maybe it was because it was a trend that kind of died out. But I was yeah. a bit surprised. That we, we had a, a grilled cheese and mac and cheese stand. Um, okay. okay. I that, would first think that would be a winner. I Yeah, I had assumed that it would be great. And I mean, it did it did pretty good in the beginning, but yeah. it, it kind of just died out. And, and that's where I think it might have been one of those trend situations where – you know, you were getting all those grilled cheese restaurants popping up and things like that. Saturation of grilled cheese everywhere. Right. Or, or it can even sometimes be here that, yeah, it's a great trend, but they come here because they want something even, I don't know, they don't imagine that they want to grill cheese in the, in sitting and watching a hockey game. So we have to look at those types of things too. And what fits into the customer, what the customer wants when they're sitting and watching a, a, a game or a concert. Yeah, I mean, I think they just get tired of some things, too, eventually. Like, we do have a good amount of season ticket holders that mm-hmm. come to the games, and we have a yeah. lot of fans. Like, even walking the concourse, I can actually recognize people are constantly here. So I think they're just always looking for change, too. So I think we don't have anything on the concourse that's more than three years old right now. Like, we're trying to refresh stands and bring new things in and just change it up so that it's not the same thing for them every time. Do you also look at uh, the beverage side quite a bit and put that into the factor of the foods? No, we have a dedicated beverage team that does that. I mean, we'll collab and stuff like tacos and tequila, obviously. You know, I want to do a taco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do margaritas. Let's do this kind of stuff like that. Bandit Peak is a good example. They have all their craft beers in, in a beautiful stand in the middle of the concourse. So craft nachos. So let's kind of pair stuff together like that. So a little bit. Yeah, we work with beverage. If we're doing a special menu, we did a bao bun menu in the test, uh, Coca-Cola test kitchen. Yep. And so we brought in uh, Kira and Ichiban on draft, you know, so just to kind of tie things together for sure. That's so cool. You guys have a cool job. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do. I still want one of those jackets, by the way, Chef Brandy. You have I'll, to come and do a shift. I know. I'll, is that the rule? Okay. I'll come yeah. and do a shift one of these <laughs> days soon. But first of all, thank you again. I'm I'm just speechless all the time. This is finding out so much of what you guys do is not what people think. Absolutely, we gotta call this 
uh, something else about really the insider scoop on what you guys do because it's crazy, amazing. So thank yeah. you again for being on the show today. I always ask this, Chef, uh, both of you, last tidbits of advice for young people out there that want to be joining our industry. Uh, we can do like the, the super fast few seconds. What's your answer on that? Try it out. Mm -hmm. Go into it, see if you like it, and then decide from there. Don't go in saying, yeah, I'm going to be a chef one day. Go in, see how it works, do the job, then make your decision. See if you love it or not so much. Can you, can you, I'm going to just ask the last question. Can you learn to love it or do you just kind of love it? Well, sometimes you don't know if you love it. <laughs> so when I started out, I started a Red Robin and I had no idea that I enjoyed it. I liked the rush is what got me into it. And then I just kept going. But if I never would have done that work experience I had in high school, I don't know that I'd be in this industry. So that's where I think, I don't know that you can learn to love it, but sometimes you don't know if you love it until you do it. 100%. Was that Kensington? That uh, I, I grew up in BC, so it was in... Uh, yeah, I was say it wasn't that one. <laughs> I did work one, Yeah, yeah when I moved to Calgary, I worked at the Kensington one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, I miss my Calgary. Anyways, well, thanks again, both of you. To everyone else, uh, you mm -hmm. know what? I'm going to have Chef Brandy back again because I, I, can't, I just love chatting with you. And uh, thanks again. Sue Chef Grad for being on the show today and really giving us this inspiration, different ideas, just what's happening behind there. You guys blow it away. Plant based stand in Calgary. Unheard of. Unbelievable. So thanks again to everyone else. We're back again uh, tomorrow. Later today, also, we're going to have a later night show, but tomorrow we're back again uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So thanks again, both of you, and to everyone else, tune in anytime you want or on demand. All right. We'll see Thank you guys you. later. Yes.